we're going to resume our uh, presentations of the scientific uh, platforms. Um, where's the pointer? There we go. So um, I'm Andre Maia, and I'm the team coordinator of the Biosciences Screening uh, Platform. Uh, and in our platform, we provide you the internal and the external scientific community, and as well the industry, state-of-the-art instruments and competence for you to solve challenging biological questions by using high-throughput and high-content uh, screening technologies. So and this is the way how we envision our interaction with you, with your lab or with your company. You can approach us with your project or on the other way around, we can approach you if we think there is a screening opportunity, there is advantages for everyone. After that, we will provide you guidance and assistance through the development of all your project, which might include cell culture, liquid handling, data acquisition, image and data analysis. But of course, you can approach the, the, um, the, the platform just for doing uh, you know, data acquisition and image analysis. There are several ways you can enter in this workflow. So in terms of resources for uh, liquid handling, we have um, a liquid handling automated workstation, which we mainly use for compound management and compound transfer, but it can also be used to automate uh, pipetting steps during your um, screening uh, protocols. We also have a 96 head um, pipe Pipette, basically pipette head, is just like as if you have a manual pipette of 96 channels, which is extremely useful for uh, medium throughput. We have a bulk dispenser, an automated bulk dispenser, this multi-drop, which is uh, a very precise and accurate machine for uh, when you, whenever you need uh, fast liquid dispensing. And you can use this uh, for uh, seeding cells, for instance, on a 96 pla uh, well plate, it will take you less than five seconds to have the whole wells uh, filled with, with your cells, but you can also use it for performing washes, buffer exchanges, everything that needs uh, rapid liquid uh, dispensing. We also have a thermo um, uh, uh, heat sealer, so whenever you need to seal your plates, uh, if you require that in your protocol, or if you need to seal the plates before you freeze them, you can use our um, semi-automated heat sealer. So in terms of data acquisition, we have two main high throughput instruments. We have the in-cell analyzer, which inside of that box, what you have is a fully automated wide field microscope, um, that you can, which is equipped with a 2x, a 10x, a 20x, and a 40x high numerical aperture objective. So you can acquire uh, images in very uh, high speed, and you can also do uh, live imaging because it's equipped with environmental control. <laughs> And with the in-cell analyzer, you can work uh, as, you know, with simple microscope slides up to uh, 1536 uh, well plates. On this right-hand side, you have the Synergy 2, which is a multi-mode microplate reader where you can um, apply the techniques of fluorescence, absorbance, and luminescence. And you can do this in any uh, um, microplate size from 6 to 1536 well plates. So we also have cell culture facilities, but these are uh, exclusive for projects being developed within the bioscience screening platform. The I3S has another platform that can host your cell culture um, uh, work. For image and data analysis, we have multi-core image analysis workstations that are equipped with image analysis uh, high throughput um, uh, software. So we have... Uh, License of licenses of proprietary software that came with uh, with the in-cell analyzer, but we also have um, uh, softwares and expertise to uh, teach you how to work with open source high throughput um, uh, image analysis software such as Cell Profiler. Uh, you can also use ImageJ. We have machine learning software such as Cell Profiler Analyst, and we also have a software that allows you to do the visual inspection um, of your um, of your data. So this is a summary of the applications that you can uh, run um, in, in the facility. So you can do indeed high throughput screening with high content, um, high content screening mode. Uh, basically, if you want to screen medium to large genetic or uh, compound libraries, which we also have available in the facility. But you can also use uh, the facility for high throughput image acquisition. So if you have 
a few micro um, uh, a few micro slides that you'd like to quickly scan, or if you have pieces of tissue that you'd like to acquire and then quickly reconstruct your mosaic, you can do that also in the um, in the platform. It doesn't have to be always very big screening campaigns. If you have a few slides that you also would like to then take advantage of our high throughput image analysis software, that can also be accomplished. We can do also compound profiling. If you have one compound that you'd like to see profiled in different cell lines, we can also do that. And as I said in the beginning, we provide you consultancy on experimental strategy, assay development, assay transfer, and miniaturization of your uh, regular assays, and then image and data analysis. We provide training by continuous instruction and guidance of our platform users, but we also uh, organize regularly courses and workshops with the thematic of high throughput and high content screening, as is an example of the high content screening and image analysis for biosciences. And as Maria introduced you um, on her presentation of a platform, we uh, uh, merged the, uh, this course into high throughput and image analysis for bioscience, which will be run in June next year. So there are three ways that you can access the platform. You can do it by equipment usage only. So upon training, everyone can use the uh, equipment at their own convenience. Uh, of course, we will continue to provide you guidance, but we can also uh, offer you a more integrative and collaborative approach by providing consultancy, even during your project writing, your grant proposals, and then guide you through all the project evaluation, the IC development, the pilot screening, and then all the analysis. Or we can also provide this as a service by off the shelf for new project development at your request. In this case, all the experimental procedure will be done within the platform um, and will be then reporting to you. So, and this is the team. So myself and my colleague, Antonio Pombingo, which is a team member, as well as a postdoc researcher in the Institute and scientific coordinator of the platform. And thank you for your attention. Hello, good morning. Thank you for being with us here today. I'm going to speak about uh, genomics platform here in I3S. Uh, it's just a really simple presentation I'm going to offer you today. So our platform is divided in three main areas. We have first generation sequencing, where we have our capillary sequencers. We have next generation sequencer. We have uh, uh, ion torrent technology and also biological sample quality control and quantification, where you have a lot of equipments from tape station, bioanalyzer, qubit, uh, real-time PCR uh, equipment, and also one studio for digital PCR. We also have uh, software resources, DNA star from uh, laser gene, which is a very robust tool for uh, genomics analysis, structure biology, and molecular biology. You can see some equipment within circles. They arrived uh, fresh new this Friday, and they will give uh, um, a boost in our units. So we have for first generation, our genetic analyzer, 3500. We, it's an upgrade of the, the, the equipment. We'll have more output with the cam of Ion Chef and Ion S5 for the next generation sequencing area, more data output. And the bioanalyzer will allow us to uh, analyze small RNA, which was an handicap we had in the facility uh, and up, to, up to now. So coupled with the resources, we have our applications. First generation sequencing, we do the gold standard Sanger sequencing of PCR products and plasmids. We just start doing cell line genotyping, which you know uh, you like it very much and it's very important. Fragment analysis also. Next generation, we have a whole list of uh, applications we can do for you, such as human target transcriptome, human exome, small genome, uh, bacterial, for example, Amplicon, metagenomics, RNA-seq, and also biological sample QCN quantification, just simple quantifier DNA, RNA, and access the integrity of RNA or genomic DNA. We can do digital PCR and also real-time PCR. Probably you want to do something that it's not listed here, so you should come to, to us, because as long as we have the resources, probably we'll do the, the application you need us to do. 
So we have two modes of approaching our platform. We have the routine mode, which we call sample on the fly. So sometimes you are as happy as that guy there. You know exactly what you want to do. You just bring your sample to our facility. You, we process it. We give you the results. Sometimes you are not so sure. So you can sit down with us. We can give you support with experimental design, protocol development, data analysis guidance, and then we'll give you the results. If you're not happy, you can repeat the whole process and do everything all over. We don't have training courses. However, we do offer individual training. You can schedule with us, either in software or protocol, and we can help you in whatever you need. So this is our team, myself. We have Zell Wish, which is our scientific coordinator, but also our consultant. We have uh, Rob Mansink, which is our lab technician. We are part of Genome Portugal. We are a certified service provider for our, our ion torrent. And because we are a service provider for hepatimub diagnostics, we are also included in their quality system, and therefore our sequencing is accredited by EPAC. So I want to thank you again for being here, and I hope to see you in the afternoon in the open live sessions. If you're not able to book for it, maybe we can see you any other day uh, when you wish. You just call us, and then you can appear and, and see our facility. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to present Sal Kaufman and General Kiting and all the services we provide. This platform aims facilitating the implementation of state-of-the-art advances in cell culture, general typing, and gene expressions technology by providing all selected services, expert consultation, and training. This platform is divided in three core areas. In cell culture, we have the establishment of tailor-made conditions for working in a variety of the cell lines, virus, and primary cells. In genotyping, we have been looking more than 100 PCR protocols. We have the implementation, the optimization of the animal protocols, including DNA extraction, DNA uh, amplification, detection, and analysis. In gene expression, we have uh, uh, real-time PCR equip equipment and an automated electrophoresis systems for expression studies. We also uh, contribute with our expertise to design primers for short amplicons with good efficiency and um, specific. Cell culture is direct for users with experience in cell culture. We have a lab with three separated rooms. Each room has uh, two uh, CO2 incubators and a biosafety cabinet available for online reservation. We also provide an antivirus based inspection service and a mycoplasma test. And uh, because we have weekly maintenance <coughs> of the room, we uh, prevent contaminations. Moreover, Training is mandatory for all new users. Protocols and documents are available for consultation. In genotyping, we offer a quick, easy, and economic service. We have two procedures if you have or not your animals in I3S animal facility. If your animals are in I3S animal facility, we uh, will send you by email the form for fill-in, and you must send it back. Uh, the other information we need is provide for uh, animal facility. For the other situations, the, the, the procedure with the form is the same, but you need to hand in the samples and um, uh, within uh, identified Eppendorf's. The results are sent by email. In gene expression, we have available for online reservation three key PCR machines and consumables. At the end of the run, the data uh, is sent by email. The experience serves as complement of key PCR, is a 
an automated electrophoresis systems who employed lab ship technologies to evaluate RNA integrity. Uh, you need only about two microliters of your RNA sample for analysis. The data report is sent by email. Thank you. I'm the team coordinator of this platform. Annabelle Cordeiro da Silva is a scientific coordinator and Tânia Meireles is a team member. Now we are open for questions. Some questions? No? Okay, I think then you can talk. Hi. Uh, the question is for Andre. Uh, the screening unit, is it only for cells? Or do you have experience and possibilities to do screening with uh, small animals, let's say like zebrafish or drosophila? Okay, no, it's not just uh, for cells, although it's a big part of the work that it's done. I have a lot of experience using uh, worms, using C. elegans. So I did genome-wide screens for, also here at I3S, for, um, for C. elegans. For other uh, organisms, we can just develop the, um, the project. So we are open to, to any project, any challenging project. Okay. Um, and the orientation issue, you have any, uh, well, with zebrafish, you sometimes, if you do the screen, you have the, difficulties that they are orientated very randomly and sometimes yes. you need it in a sort of uh, direct position. Exactly. So I, I'm, I'm not a zebrafish uh, researcher. <laughs> there are those in-house. Um, but uh, what I've uh, read for um, zebrafish uh, screening, so there, there are ways so you, that you can somehow paralyze them. So there are ways to get them at the bottom of, the, um, of your plate. Uh, and there are um, soft image analysis software that can detect the different um, structures and segments of the, um, of, the, of, the, of the embryo of the fish. So I know that, that uh, that's already implemented, but it's not, we did not implement it here, but we can, we can do that. In fact, it's one of my plans with uh, Jose Reza to do that. Then we can move on. Next. So, uh, good morning, everyone. I would like to first to thank you all to be here. So, um, I will, I have the, the pleasure to introduce you to the translational, translational cytometry platform. And um, as you can see by the name, we work with the flow cytometry. And uh, our aim is to, uh, to offer efficient and reliable uh, flow cytometric services with the highest standards of quality control and uh, productivity. So the flow cytometry uh, can have uh, several applications. Um, and uh, so if we can do single cell analysis of heterogeneous mixture of uh, cells in suspension. And then is, uh, that is one of the first uh, things that we can see already when we pass the sample, uh, that we can, uh, and that is uh, the way that you see. So we see dot plots uh, in which each uh, dot is a cell. 
and uh, we can already see uh, by size, so it's size against kernel velocity, we can see if the, our uh, sample is um, heterogeneous or not by, by size. Then we can go uh, a little bit deeper and we can uh, label uh, our markers with uh, antibodies that has a fluorochrome associated and we can do multicolor analysis of cell of, of, uh, and do cell phenotypes. We can also use flow cytometry for gene expression to analyze membrane potential, uh, calcium and uh, magnesium influx and even uh, to analyze the cell cycle. Another thing that is um, really uh, nice, I think, with this, with this technique, the flow cytometry, is to do sorting. So uh, with sorting, we can separate um, the populations of interest. So basically, uh, but, uh, we will have a fluid uh, stream that can uh, separate your, um, your populations, and then we can collect them, and you can use further. Uh, for um, uh, for your purposes, and we can have those populations uh, with a <coughs> big uh, with a pure, uh, and we can have uh, uh, more than 95 percent of purity. So, just to show you the equipments that we have here at uh, I3S, so let's start with the flow cytometers. These ones are just for analysis. Uh, we have the BDFAX Calibre. Uh, that, is, that has two lasers and we can have up to four colors here. The same with the BD uh, Accuracy 6, uh, also two lasers and uh, four different colors. And then we have also the Fax Counter 2. This one has three lasers and uh, we can do um, analysis um, for uh, till up to uh, eight colors. So we can have uh, more um, a, a deeper analysis of our um, of our uh, sample. We also have a working station where we can uh, where you all can analyze your data. So basically, you just need to book the um, the workstation, and there we will have a computer with this with a license of uh, the software. The software that we mainly use is the Clojo software. Okay, um, so. As I mentioned, we, ha we, uh, we also can do sorting, and for that we have the BD, this fax area two, let me see, okay. The, the, this machine, this sorter, that is the fax area two. And um, this one in specific, we have three lasers, so we can do up to eight colors, and we can separate up to four populations at the same time and collect those populations. We can collect not only for tubes, so the, um, uh, the normal tu tubes that we use in uh, flow cytometry th that we call fax tubes, that is for 5 ml, but we can, uh, the collection tubes can be even Eppendorf's 0.5 or 1.5 ml, uh, Falcon tubes, and even for uh, plates, uh, six well plates, uh, 96 well plates, even th uh, 384 <coughs> well plates. So. It's a matter of uh, analyze what you want to do then with your with your samples. This is if it's for a culture or if it's, for example, for RNA uh, extraction. So if it's for culture, we can uh, put immediately in the plate with the medium. If it's for RNA expression, if you if you prefer, you can bring already your Eppendorf's, and we collect already for red uh, for um, RNA uh, writers. Um, so. Training in our platform is uh, continuous for the for the users that want to, to use the cell analyzer. So we have a continuous formation, uh, the, and then they become independent users of the cell analyzers. Uh, we also have experimental advice and consulting, uh, and of course, we, all, all years we want to do workshops and advanced flow cytometry uh, courses. So. As I mentioned before, so uh, up, to, up, uh, up and training, the users can uh, book the cell analyzers and, uh, and then they use as, uh, as they want and as their own convenience. So the platform is open 24 hours uh, per day uh, for, the, for the cell analyzers. Not it, it's not the case for the cell sorting. The cell sorting needs to be a technician. Um, we also have the project development mode where we can have um, um, a collaborative 
uh, approach uh, for your projects, so where we can uh, talk and we um, we can analyze what we can do with um, with this technique for for uh, for your project and uh, of course uh, prizes the the project submission, and we also have of course the the service request mode where we can. Um, we can deliver, uh, you bring your samples and we can deliver you the, the, the your your data and we, then we can uh, analyze them. Uh, just to, to finish, this is our team. So my, uh, me as the team coordinator, Nuno Alves as the scientific coordinator and Emilia Cardoso as a team member. And thank you. <laughs> Good morning again. Sorry, it's me again. So now uh, I will present the platform that I'm uh, responsible for. The, the platform is in vivo camera size and we provide scientific expertise and services by the use of the cheek embryo model. More specifically, it's coriolantoid membrane, the CAM. So um, this is kind of a new platform. It started in 2012 and it arose from the need to have in vivo tools to, to, to evaluate complex functions. And uh, we chose the GCAM model as that alternative or additional model to, to use. Why? Why did you choose this? Um, the chick embryo, the egg, it's an egg, okay? Uh, it's a complete in vivo environment. Uh, since it's developing, it is still immunoincompetent and this will be very relevant because it will not reject uh, non chick cells, and it's very easy to manipulate, and you can observe it uh, very uh, easily without invasive procedures. The coriolantoid membrane, it's a membrane that surrounds, sorry, that surrounds the, the chick, it's an extra embryonic membrane, and it is highly vascularized. So it will provide very efficiently nutrients and oxygen to the cells that you put on the top of it. So it's an excellent environment to grow mammalian cells. You can also use the CAM to test substances, uh, just placing them directly on that. <coughs> also, uh, the use of uh, embryos, bird embryos, doesn't have any relevant regulatory or ethical issues. So there is no restriction in the use of this model um, and uh, as long as they don't etch and they don't okay there are no chicks in the lab ever just to keep that clear and it's quite a cost-effective model because the logistics is really easy everything is inside the shell you don't have to clean or change the house or everything else you, you'll check in the afternoon when you go to the lab and because we are using always the the development time, experiments are quite short also. Okay, they will also, they will take at a maximum three weeks. Comparing to mice, it's quite fast. So summarizing, it's an affordable fast and you can have medium high throughput using eggs instead of uh, rodents. So what can you, you test on this? So uh, cancer cells, uh, that's, the most relevant examples that I will give you, but you can also test other types of cells, mesenchymal, fibroblasts, uh, biomaterials, and we've used biomaterials di directly assembled in disks or in microspheres or in combination with cells. <coughs> you can test drugs. Uh, also directly, if you want to check the, 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 the effect just uh, of the drug, or you can test the drugs on chinographs on the CAM. You can use uh, extracts from microorganisms or plants that you also want to test. And uh, you can use supernatants, um, like solutions that are enriched in exosomes or other type of vesicles that you are interested in. So what can you see? What are the functional assays that you can use? The most classical and the most well-known and established assay is the endogenic assay. So the ability of uh, your test's condition to uh, induce the growth of new vessels. 
So in this example, you have a cell line that was transfected with a gene of interest, and you can see, as compared to the control, that it will increase the antigenic response. So the gene in question is responsible for an increased antigenic response. Also, you can evaluate tumor genesis when you're talking about tumor cell lines, of course. But uh, if it's not a tumor cell line, you can check for proliferation or apoptosis, etc. So after you have your tumor, you can process this tissue as you do with any other human or mice tissue. So you can process it in the HEMS facility <laughs> to do a cut and histology and immunoista chemistry, whatever you need to further validate your results. You can also study invasion. So for those that are not from the cancer field, uh, the, the first step of tumor progression is the, the, the ability of cells to, to go to nearby tissues. And the CAM has a three-layer structure with epithelial and mesenchymal cells, and it quite mimics very well the microenvironments that the cells would encounter. So here you see uh, whoops, sorry, a cell line that is invading the CAM comparing to its control. You can also evaluate metastasization, so the ability of cells to go from the inoculation site to a distal site, a distal site in the CAM or the organs of the, the, the embryo. Or you can also check vascular permeability. This is, doesn't have to be in a cancer contest, but you can evaluate the ability of um, if the new vessels that are being formed are functional or not. Uh, sometimes they, they are very leaky if they are not functional. Other times they, you have new vessels that are working fully. So you can also evaluate this uh, using the CAMA site. In terms of research fields, uh, as I told you, we have mainly been working in cancer research and anti-cancer drug development. But in the past years, we have been also working in other, in other areas, biomaterials, regenerative therapies, cardiovascular infection, and there is numerous possibilities. So the, the, the lab is, um, is uh, full equipped to, to use the egg for whatever you need. So how do we work? You first step, you come and talk to me. Okay, we don't have... Uh, <coughs> Although we have standardized procedures, every work is kind of personalized. So the first step is always sitting down and work out a protocol that, that will answer your scientific question as, as you need. After designing this, this personalized protocol, I will do the, the experimental execution, the analysis of the results, and you will have the a report with the interpretation of the data. After these steps, sometimes if you have um, uh, histological analysis or stuff, I will still help you with that. But we always work on this on this basis. So uh, I'm the team coordinator, and Joanna Perez is the scientific coordinator, and this is the wonder team. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you. I'm uh, Sophia Lamas, and I'll present the last scientific platform, which is the Animal Facility. So the IPS Animal Facility is a specific pathogen-free uh, facility that houses mice, rats, and rabbits. We also have two separate areas for sea bass and zebrafish models, although these are not part of the rodent animal facility. These are run by two scientific groups. And our goal is to allow researchers to use animal models, but always taking into consideration animal welfare issues and the application of the three R's. So uh, my talk will be mainly about the rodent animal facility. As I told you before, sea bass and, and zebrafish models can also be used, but they are associated with the Kutebet and Nunustant group. And um, the rodent animal facility is composed by a specific pathogen area in which we breed all of our animals, mainly genetically modified models, but also some uh, wild-type strains of mouse and rats, and some uh, immunodeficient models. Then researchers have access to the experimental area, 
and here we have several areas that can be adapted also to different kinds of work. So we have surgical and procedural rooms, all of them have anesthetic machines and all the equipment that the researcher needs to perform uh, different procedures in animals. We have two uh, behavioral areas, one for rat and another one for mouse. Both of them have animal rooms with inverted life cycle and uh, testing rooms so that the testing, uh, the, the behavior tests can be done in a separate area. We have two infectious a areas, one for level two and another for one for level three agents, and I'll talk about these ones in the next slide. Uh, we have several <coughs> imaging devices that all we'll also talk in the next slide. We do a red derivation of mouse strains as a way to standardize the microbiological content of our animals and also to avoid the introduction of unwanted agents. We do cryopreservation of mouse embryos and sperm. Um, we recently started the production of genetically modified animals and we can also produce polyclonal antibodies using rats and rabbits. So in terms of equipment, I'll not talk about all the equipment that is inside the facility. I'll just focus on those equipment that I think that are, um, that in somehow differentiate the facility. So one of them is the IVIS Lumina. The IVIS Lumina is located inside the ABSL2 area and it allows you to detect luminescence or fluorescence in your animals. So you can mark either your cells or your bacteria or your parasites. And uh, in some way, you will be able to do longitudinal studies so you can get several images of the same animal without having to sacrifice the animal. So it results in a reduction of the number of animals that you need to use and also in an increase of the power of the data that you get. The x-ray is an intraneural x-ray and it is used mainly to detect uh, bone alteration, so for heart or tissues monitorization. Then we have the micro-ultrasound that Marie already talked to you about it. Uh, the micro-ultrasound is uh, uh, specially focused on monitorization of uh, soft tissues. Um, so if you are working with uh, cardiac studies or even with um, cancer studies, you can detect very small masses from the beginning of the experiment and follow that mass through the end of the experiment without having to euthanize the animal. The advantage of the micro-ultrasound is that uh, it also gives you very precise measurements of the, of the mass or, or the alteration that you want to find in the soft tissue. Um, now, I will talk about the micro-injection system. It has nothing to do with the uh, your imaging. The micro-injection system is a, an equipment that we have acquired very recently. It has two micro-manipulators and one micro-injector. Uh, we are using it to inject uh, mouse embryos um, to, do ma uh, to do pronuclear uh, micro-injection with CRISPR-Cas9, um, but uh, it can also be used for blastocyst injection or even ICSIS because we have uh, also the piezo device. And then the ABSL2 and 3 areas um, are areas that are fully dedicated to work with infectious agents. They both have dedicated animal rooms and dedicated equipment from uh, uh, negative pressure IVCs, biosafety chambers. The, mm, the rooms work in negative pressure and they have all the conditions to work uh, in a safe environment with uh, infectious agents. In terms of training, we provide training on key issues related to <coughs> animal welfare. Part of this training is related to the mandatory training that uh, we require researchers to do before they have access to the facility. We participate in the organization of both of the labs, the C and the B, uh, CURS that are run internally here at the <coughs> IPS. We organize workshops throughout the year about uh, perfusion, <coughs> surgical procedures, suture techniques and other, other themes related to laboratory animal <coughs> science. All the equipment that I told you before is associated also with the training program <coughs> and whenever uh, a new model needs to be implemented we will support the, um, the research team to implement the, the model. In terms of access modes, um, all users must have this training as a basis to go to the animal facility, so a plaza C or B. Um, then they will have to perform a mandatory introductory visit in which they will learn all the, the rules about the animal facility. And then if you want to go to ABSL2 or ABSL3 areas, we have also a specific training for you to have access to these areas. Um, 
we try to teach re researchers in a way that they are independent to perform their works with animals, but in some cases we might also uh, perform the procedures as a service. So the team is composed by me, uh, Monica Souza is our scientific coordinator, and then we have a, a sidekick team of 14, 14 persons, so eight caretakers, two technicians, and four persons inside the washing area. Thank you. Is it possible to do infection studies, for example, for screening of uh, mutants, bacterial mutants or fungi mutants okay, in STEM? It is possible, uh, but not uh, in the current conditions, okay? The, the infection that I mentioned is, uh, we tested the, the antigenic potential of a protein from an infection agent. And that, so it was published in an infectious uh, disease uh, magazine, but we didn't actually infect the eggs with the microorganisms, okay? We used a purified protein from the organism to and tested that. But it is possible, although we cannot mix uh, eggs infected with eggs with cells, and we, at this moment we don't have that kind of separation. Still, we, ca we can work it out somehow. We can talk and try to figure out uh, what we can do with it. Sofia Lamas. Uh, to what extent do you genetically modify uh, the animals you have here? Like, uh, you I talked about gene genetically modifying. To what extent do you do that? Like, um, so, are you talking about the service of uh, production of genetically modified yes, animals? Yes, yes. So it was, uh, we started trying to implement the service uh, last year, and we were able to do for nuclear injection and to have animals that were expressing a GSP construct. So uh, right now we are moving for CRISPR Cas9 uh, DNA uh, constructs, uh, and that's the phase where we are uh, at the moment.